Hey guys and welcome back to another Unrangent 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over creating AI NPCs with random names. So I'm not going to actually go over creating the AI themselves and the random roam and all that stuff. I do have other videos where I've already created that. Today is simply just going to be giving them names, displaying them above their heads so you can only see it when you're close enough and when you're not close enough you can't see it and it's going to always face the player as well. So let me hit play and I'll show you what this is and again they're also going to be random names. So if I go over to this one, it's going to be Eevee. If I go over to this one, it's going to be Asmund. If I go over to this one, it's going to be Leon. If I go back in, go over, this one is now going to be Eevee again. This one's going to be Frederick. This one is going to be Maisie. Now the reason why I got Eevee twice there is because I've only got 20 names. So it's, there's obviously still quite a big chance of getting a repeat. So the more names you add, the less chance you have of a repeat. And you can also set it up so you can check to see if you have already read that name. But I'm not going to go into that today because that is a much longer explanation and it's not too necessary for this. And again, when you go close, when you're not close, you can and can't see it. And it's also going to follow you around so it's always facing the player on the screen like this. So this is what we made today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our list of our names. So I'm going to be doing that in the game mode blueprint. So I'm going to go to content, third person BP, blueprints, third person game mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus variable here. I'm going to name this one names2 because I already have the names1 in there just because I don't want to write out all the names again. So create a variable. You'll see I already have a set what it is but for you it will just be a boolean like this. So create your names variable. Then we're going to change the variable type from boolean to a text and this little tic tac shape thing here next to that that is just a normal variable. We want to change this to an array so the 3x3 three three grid. So not a single variable but an array like so. We can compile and save that. Now under the default value we can add in many array elements like this. And this is where you can add in all of your names. So for example Dan, Jake, Evie, the list goes on. You can add as many names as you'd like. Again continually adding them like this. And I already have one here which is the one I'm going to use because I already have 20 names in here. But again the more you add the less chance you have of a repeat. And so this is what I've got here, just these 20 different names which I've just randomly picked out. And we're going to compile, save and close the game mode because that is all we need to do in there. And what we're going to do now is open up our AI. So you can see I have mine here. What I've got is simply just, I duplicated the third person character, deleted all the code I didn't need and then just made this simple code here to random roam, which again I have other videos on showing how to do this. But once you've got all that set up, what I'm going to do is go over to the viewport here, add a component and I'm going to add a sphere collision like so. I'm going to scale this up to the size I want. Now this is going to be where the player needs to be in order to see the name pop up on the screen. So again the player has to be in this circle or in the sphere sorry for them to see the name. So make this as big as you want and what I can do is I can minimize this like so. Get a top view and you can see that is the area around the AI which the player needs to be in. So I think that's going to be good, maybe just a tad bit smaller, like so. Again, customize that to get it perfect for you. I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to go to the event graph, find some empty space, right click on my sphere collision, add an event, and I'm going to add on component begin overlap. And I'm going to right click again and add on component end overlap. Now the reason I'm doing this is because again, this is a simple way to know if we are close enough to the AI to display the text. So instead of running an event tick and seeing the distance and checking to see if the distance is enough or not, we can simply just get a sphere collision and have that work for us automatically. And so to see if it is the player which is close enough, out of the other actor, what I'm going to do is get an actor has tag, like so. And the tag, what I'm going to write is I'm going to write player. Now what we need to do is we need to open up our character blueprint. So for me that's the third person character. And then select third person character self or whatever it is named for you but it's just self up in the top of the components list search for tags in the top right details panel and we're going to add a tag and i'm going to name this one player making sure it's spelt exactly the same way that i've spelt it here so they are now the same because as you can see this is seeing if the actor has a tag and this actor now has that tag of player so we know this character here is a player so it means if another ai overlaps another AI's sphere so they're too close to each other they're not players so it's not going to show up on the screen which is obviously how we want that to work. So we can now compile, save and close the character blueprint as well because again that's all we need to do in there. 
So once you've got the actor hashtag with the player there, what I'm going to do is also right click on the actor and I'm going to promote that to a variable naming this character reference or car ref like so because we need to access this later on and that's to make sure that it's always going to be facing us. So we need to get the location of this. Then I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that into the character reference and the condition is going to be the return value of the actor has tag because again we only want to fire this off if it is the player which is why we're using this branch here to see if this is true or false. So we only want to come out of true. If it is true, what we want to do is we want to make sure we can see the text. So we need to add in that text now. So let's go to the viewport, add another component, and we can simply just add a text render. And I'm going to move this up to be above the player, like so, where I'd like the text to be. So what I'm also going to do is set the horizontal alignment to the center and the vertical alignment to text center as well and put it, let's say, there, so it's going to be that far above the player's head, or the AI's head, sorry. And again, I think that's going to be good for me. What I'm also going to do is make sure that it's set to be hidden by default so the player can't see it, because we're not going to be close enough by default. So simply, I'm going to untick visible like that. And we can compile, save, go back to the event graph, and we can drag and drop in a reference to that text render in here, like so. And what I'm going to do is I want to now show this because we are close enough. So I'm going to drag out of it and set visibility like so coming out of true and I'm going to tick the new visibility so we can now see it. Now we do want to do something after this but we'll come back to that in a second. What I'm going to do instead is select the actor has tag, the branch and the set visibility and I'm going to duplicate these so control C, control V and I'm going to connect them into the end overlap as well connecting the tag, target into other actor and the new visibility is now going to be unticked so it's false. So this is going to show and hide the text if we are close enough to the AI. So what I'm going to do is compile, and the target also needs to be connected into text render, sorry. Compile, save, let's hit play to test if that part works. We're going to go up to it, we can see it, it just says text, and walk away, we don't see it. Obviously it isn't rotating yet, and it don't have names yet, but that part is working. So now let's set up the rest of it, which is very easy to do. So let's now set up rotating it. So what I'm going to do is just after this, I'm going to find some empty space, I'm going to right click and add a custom event and I'm going to name this one rotate text like so. And then out of this I'm going to hold down B left click to get a branch because we want to be checking something again and we want to be checking to see if we should rotate the text and to see if we should do that we're going to just simply see if the text is visible. So we're going to get a reference to our text render again out of this just get is visible. Connect the return value into the condition there because if the text is visible then it's on screen and we can see it so we want to make sure it is facing the player. If it's not visible the player can't see it so it doesn't need to be facing the player. It's as simple as that. So false we obviously don't want to do anything that is going to break the loop to stop it rotating and true we want to continue the loop to make sure it is rotating. And so to make sure it is rotating what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another reference to the text render here. I can use this one but I'm just keeping it neat and tidy so I'm going to get a new one and out of that I'm going to set world rotation like so. Make sure it's world not relative. And we're going to connect that into the true. What I'm also going to do is right click new rotation and split the structure pin like so because we only want to mess about with the z value because that is where we're rotating it. We're just going to rotate it on the z so it's going to look something like this. If I'll use the mesh as an example, it'll rotate like that. Not like this or anything like that. So that should work. So we're going to go back to the event graph here. But now we need to figure out what the Z angle should be. So how do we do that? Well, we need to find out the look at rotation between the player and the AI. So what I'm going to do is this is where we're going to use the character reference we made earlier. So I'm going to drag and drop in the character reference, get that. And then out of that, I'm going to get the actor location. So we're getting the location of the player. And just above that, I'm going to right click and get a normal actor location, so this is going to get the location of the AI. Then we need to find a look at rotation between these. So we can drag out the top get actor location and simply get find look at rotation, start being get actor location, target being character reference get actor location, and that's it simply done. Now again, we only want to do the Z, so I'm going to right click return value, split that structure pin, connect the Z into the Z there, like so. It's a lot more simple than you might think. 
And then to make this a loop, what I'm going to do is after the set world rotation, hold down D, left click to get a delay. And I'm going to set the duration to something very small, like 0.01. And the completed is going to go into a call function, rotate text that we have up here. So it's going to loop like so. And the reason we have the delay is just so we don't get an infinite loop error, because if this is doing it instantly, it's not going to have enough time to actually check to see if this branch goes to false. So it will be continually looping for the rest of the game and it won't be able to stop ever. So that's why we have this. We're going to compile, save, and then we'll test that part out. So we've got three different steps. We've done step two. Let's see if this part works. It's going to show up and we're not actually seeing it because we, because we missed one vital step, which I do all the time. We forgot to actually call this function. So on begin overlap, after set visibility to true, we also need to call function rotate text like so. Now we can test this out and we can see it shows when we're close enough and it is going to rotate to always face the player no matter which direction we are facing from the AI like so. Now what we need to do is actually set the name of the text to be our random name for the AI. That is just as simple. We can come up to event begin play that we have here and if you don't have it, you can just get event begin play and what we can do is just off of this we're going to cast to our game mode because that is where we created the text variable so just cast the blueprint where you have the names already we made earlier which mine is the third person game mode object for me is obviously going to be get game mode because it is my game mode blueprint like so and as third person game mode I'm simply going to just get names which is the name of the array that I made and out of that, what I'm going to do is just simply get something called length. And that is so I know how many elements are inside of this array. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to come out of names again and get a copy, not get a ref, sorry, get a copy like so. And now we need to select a random integer. And it's going to be a random integer, so it's a random name. So out of this, I'm going to drag out and get random integer and just the normal random integer there so we can set a max number. This max number, I want to be the length, so it's going to be how long the array is, so it's going to go from zero to the maximum amount we have in the array, so it can be any single name inside of that array. Now, if you don't want duplicates, what you could do is then also just remove that, that element from the array so that name can't be picked again, which I might also do as well. But first, what I'm going to do is set the text to be that name. So we're going to again get the text render. Out of this, we simply just set text like so, connect that into the cast, value being the return value of that getter copy there, like so. So now when we begin the game, it's gonna get the array of all the names, choose a random one, and set that to be the name of the AI. And again, if you want to remove that now so you can't get a duplicate, what I'm gonna do is simply just remove item, like so. Very simply connecting that array into the names there. So you can see it looks something like this. The getter copy goes into the remove, the array also goes into the remove there, connecting that into there like so. Now at the start I said it's a more lengthy process, and as you see there it's just simply one node. The lengthy process I was going on about is so you can have no duplicates, and then when you run out of the names, you restart the list. Because what will happen with this is if you have more than 20 AI, or more than the names you have in there, there'll be no names left after you finish with these. But for me, since I only have three, this is gonna be fine. So I'm gonna compile, save, hit play to test this out, and we can see this should be working perfectly now. So I'm gonna go over here, this one's called Orin, and you can see I can walk up and back, and the name is working perfectly. I can walk around, that's also working great as well. And go over to this one, this one's gonna be called Maisie, and you can see I, it follows me around, and it only shows where I need it to, and the other one's around here, called Amy, and again, that works perfectly as well. So that's working perfectly for us, and I think that'll be it for this video, which we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have an AI NPC with a name, they all have different random names. And what was gonna happen is if we walk close enough or we're not close enough to it, we're gonna see or not see the name dependent on our distance and the name is gonna follow us round. So it's always gonna face the player and it's always visible to see. And you see there, it just takes a bit of a while to actually rotate round, but it does still work. And you can obviously just decrease the delay to make that quicker. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.